My guest is joining me right now, Mr. Waziri Adio. He is the uh, founder and, and executive director at Agora Policy. He was also at the immediate past executive secretary of NATI. Welcome, Mr. Adio, <laughs> to, the, to the program. We're talking uh, managing Nigeria's forex situation. I read your piece. In, uh, uh, in the daily, but let's get started at how we got here. You know, let's try and see why we are at this crossroad now. Perhaps let's try and give our uh, viewers a bead of diagnosis. You know, when you go to the doctor, the doctor, they will check, the nurses will check your blood pressure, your temperature, what else again, your oxygen level, they will impute it into the system, then the doctor will ask asking you what is wrong with you. What is wrong with Nigeria's foreign exchange? market in, with your own, you know, with what you've seen so far? Okay, I, I think the, the easiest way to look at it um, is to look at, uh, when we look at the dollar naira exchange rate, uh, we should look at it in terms of the price of dollar, uh, you know, in naira terms, right? Uh, like the price of any other good mm -hmm. is usually determined by forces of supply and demand. You know, so um, if you have more demand than supply, as we we're taught in basic economics, economics. Uh, prices will go up, you know. Um, so, and that is, that, is, that is the thing, you know. Um, we import a lot, uh, and we're not generating enough. We all know that the central bank does not print dollars, right? And anything that you need to buy, uh, including finished goods, including intermediate goods, including subscriptions that some of us make, you know, we are subscribing to New York Times, economies, you are buying things on Amazon and all of that, you use dollars, right? So is it stock of dollars in the country that you can use to make that? So if you have um, so much demand and you don't have adequate supply, uh, the price of that good will continue to go up. And so what that translates to is that the price of um, dollar, you know, continues to go up. Before we got here, uh, we're trying to manage to going back to the issue of supply and demand, mm. we're trying to say, okay, we don't have adequate supply. We don't have so much control over that, right? But let's manage the demand. Uh, but in managing the demand and in rationing supply, uh, we're just creating all kinds of distortions. So at that point, we're imposing an artificially high price on the, on the, on the Naira. Because right? from your explanation, yeah. whether because of what we saw at that point, in terms of um, arbitrage, mm -hmm. that we saw a lot of arbitrage mm -hmm. at, that, at that point because we were rationing supply. Yeah. So it costs arbitrage that really now depreciated the Naira. From your explanation. Uh, you see, when we're rationing it, mm -hmm. right, um, by the logic of rationing, you can't give to everybody. So some people will get it. And everybody knows that they were getting it at a price below the market price. So those ones who get it and do all sorts of things that people, you know, normal human beings do, uh, you create opportunity for people to cut corners, uh, to engage in sharp practices, mm -hmm. and they did that. But, you know, that is not exactly what we're suppressing demand. That didn't really um, um, solve our problem. Mm -hmm. Another layer of the problem is that, uh, because if you go back, there was a time when, uh, on the average, every month, mm -hmm. we're getting like $3 billion, $4 billion, yeah. you know, especially from the oil and gas sector. Mm -hmm. So that dwindled significantly. Um, and you know, government people will usually tell you that, oh, uh, FX from oil and gas reduced because you know, oil production reduced. That is true. Uh, they will say, oh, it's because of oil theft. That is also true. Mm. But there's also another part there, which is that, you know, um, the share of the oil that goes to the country significantly reduced. And that share, we're using it to batter, to bring petrol. So we're still exporting petrol. Uh, sorry, we're still exporting, exporting crude, crude, which ordinarily should have translated to dollars. But it was not translated to dollars. It was coming back as petrol that was sold here that resulted to a swap. It's a swap arrangement. Mm. We have this arrangement called direct sale, direct, direct purchase. purchase. And what that meant is that, you know, um, okay, let me also step back a little bit. Uh, we've always had this policy of when you get uh, the crude oil that belongs to the Federation, um, for, as for, for context, it's not all the oil produced in Nigeria that goes to the Federation. The companies will get their share, 
the Federation will get its own share. So the share that goes to the government, uh, in most instances, may be roughly like 50% of the entire production. Uh, over time, it has been reducing. Uh, that share is usually portioned into two. One will be for Federation export. Federation export will be exported and will come back as dollars. It will increase our reserves and all of that. Then we have another one we we'll call domestic crude allocation. That one we allocate for domestic consumption. In the early 2000s, it was very significant. In early, like 2004, for example, uh, total production, total share of the Federation, uh, domestic crude allocation was like 8%, 8.57%, mm -hmm. meaning we're exporting like 92%, and that was fetching us dollars, right? Uh, then somebody got a brain with and said, oh, we're having this issue around, you know, first scarcity, you know, queues, you know, and all these issues around, you know, uh, foil inadequacy and all of that. They said, okay, why don't we give NNPC 445,000 barrels per day and let them use that? Because that was the installed capacity of the three or the four refineries that, you yeah, know, the government have. had. You know, let's give them 445,000 barrels per day and let them use that. Some of it in their refinery, some of it they will have it as swap with other refineries and bring in petrol so that they will have enough petrol. At that point in time, it looked like a reasonable idea. Idea, In the sense that the country, the Federation, I mean, was getting between 1.2 million and 1.3 million barrels per day out of the 2 million barrels that OPEC. we're producing. Yeah, OK, right? no, yeah. Yes, you know? we're so, so if you are producing mm -hmm. like, you know, 1.2, 1.3, and you are giving, you are portioning 445, you still have about 800, 900 that you are exporting sure. directly. Yeah. So what happened over time is our, our production reduced. Uh, the composition of the production also changed so that the companies are not getting more share of the production than, than the federation. Then... And OPEC quota to reduce. Yeah, you know, OPEC quota <laughs> reduced. Yeah. But, you know, we're not even able to meet, meet the quota. Meet the quota, You yes. know, at some point we were producing, there was mm. a time we were producing below 1 million, million barrels, barrels per day. Uh, it stabilized around 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, right? Uh, but the thing is that we got to a situation where almost all the oil that we get now as Federation equity and other, other arrangements goes to domestic crude allocation. Mm. Remember that I said there was a time when it was like 8%. In 2005, that was when this policy kicked in. It went from 8% to 34%. And by 2023, domestic crude allocation became like 100%. And part of the problem of that is this. It's not just that um, it will not translate to dollars. It might even not translate to Naira because NNPC was making upfront deductions for subsidy, for pipeline maintenance and repairs, for crude theft, you know, and, and other things. So, you know, it was, it was like double whammy, if I multiple whammies, whammy, right? Um, the, what should have gone into FX accretion was not going there. At some point, in 2010, for example, there was a paper by Agora Policy. In 2010, oil and gas inflow to the central bank constituted 94% of the total FX inflows Reserve, to the yeah. central bank. By 2022, June 2022, it declined to 24%. We don't know the figure now, but my guess mm. is that it's much lower than that. Now that. Okay. With what you've just said now, let me take you to what Mr. Governor said yesterday, mm -hmm. Yemi Cardoso. Yeah. When he talked, in fact, wh when I was listening to him, I had, had to write it down because I remember at the World Bank NDU in December, when I had Yemi Cardoso on the panel with uh, the NNPC yeah, right. CFO was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Wale Mr. Wale was yeah, there. Yeah. I asked Wale Adu that question. Mm -hmm. That say NNPC here, they've mm -hmm. not been giving us billions of dollars yeah. in the last few years. Yami Cardoso would not produce dollars. Yeah. But yesterday when I heard Yami Cardoso, when he said, he said they are coordinating efforts now by the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Ministry of Finance, and the NNPC Limited yeah. to get inflow back to the, uh, to the reserves. So does that give you some kind of indication as perhaps the situation would, um, you know, would improve? Uh, yes and no. And okay. I'm saying that in a very careful way. Uh, yes, that you know, I don't have the details of, mm. of, of, but I take Mr. Uh, Cardoso on his say so uh, that there's a coordination between uh, CBN, um, NMPC, and Ministry of Finance to make sure that all the effects from oil sales, right, pass, passes through 
the central bank, yeah. right? And you know that will increase um, um, our, our, our foreign reserves, you know, and will relieve pressure on, on the naira. That is fine. But we also need to look at, you know, when we say all the sales, all the effects from oil sale, what are we looking at? Are we looking at the total federation share? Or do we still have this portion that we allocate for domestic consumption mm. that comes back in Naira? Okay. As long as you are not looking at that. Uh, NMPC, for example, just released um, um, on, on their website um, um, the, the, the figures for November 2023. 20, uh, and they had figures that, you know, something to the, to the effect of um, uh, 300,000 barrels per day allocated for domestic consumption through DSDP that they said they had canceled, right? Mm. Uh, and that would, for that month, that's, 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 you know, close to like 750 uh, billion, uh, sorry, 750 million dollars, you know, for that month. So I don't know what, what we're looking at. If, as long as you still have the DSDP, as long as you still have the DCA, that is dollar that is not coming in. Coming in. And that is dollar that the CBN is staffed on. Mm. Would there uh, have been perhaps another option? But we're going more into the oil oil uh, conversation, and yeah, I don't want us yeah. to do that. But I know it's also very much connected yeah, it, it's to connected what we're because dis This is about the only thing we sell to the world. Exactly. That yields it us foreign exchange. It about 80% of our forex. So mm. if that is not translating to forex for you, is a major reason for concern. Now, but, you know, wh wh why should it even be a major reason for concern? And I hope that we can disseminate why it is a major reason to our viewers. Yeah. Perhaps that because when we had foreign reserves, if we, have the, if we used to have this kind of crisis before, the central bank will come in full force to defend the Naira yeah. because it has so much mm -hmm. in its reserves. But now, you know day, so you don't have armor. <laughs> you know day, you know day. You know day, you know day. <laughs> so you don't yeah. have armor. So that yeah. is why this conversation is, is, yeah. is, in, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. is important because yeah. if the CBN now has dollars, yeah. Anybody that can come into the market, it can withstand because yeah. it has that financial muscle. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, for example, you can make a strategic decision that this is what you want the value of your currency to be, right? As long as you have the firepower mm. to defend it. There was a time we had about $68 billion in external reserve. During our right? just And this. real reserve, reserves, not audio reserve. Uh, is it artificial reserves we have now? No, no. But if you're following the discussions, mm. right, you know, um, and if you've also been watching the body language, if our reserve is 36, 33, 36 billion, mm. we will be doing more than we're doing yeah. right now. We'll not be getting mm. jittery over G3. certain things. Yeah. There's, a, there's a clear illiquidity in the market, and people can see that. Okay. If we take a look at uh, the central bank's language towards addressing this FX situation, yeah. You also saw that the uh, CBN has come up with the monetary policy calendar, and they said tentative. But Dr. Cardoso, let it not be tentative. Mm -hmm. We're all waiting for yeah. market direction. He also mentioned yet yesterday at the NESG uh, that he understands. In fact, when he was saying it, I was writing it down. He was saying that we understand what you are passing through in terms of perhaps businesses, markets, yeah. people that need school fees, and all of that. Do you mm -hmm. think that the patients? Uh, from Nigerians to the central bank is thinning out. Yemi Kadoso was appointed, I think, in September last year, about four months on the job. Do you think that the patience is thinning out in terms of addressing Nigeria's, uh, the Naira's depreciation? Okay, uh, let, let me say this. Um, I, I, I read the re news report mm. and I also watched the video. I think it was a good speech, um, very reassuring. And uh, it shows that, you know, uh, they have clarity about what the problem is. And, you know, they are very determined, you know, and they have, you know, like I said, they expanded their toolkit. You know, and they're talking about transparency, about eliminating communication, uh, communication when I heard that, about I was eliminating like, okay. arbitrage, mm. you know, and focusing on price stability, you know, and all of that. Um, and also the reform, to so keep the reform going. And they also mentioned the issue of Naira being undervalued, you know, and all of that. You know, all the right things is said, right? Um, but the twist I want to put to this is this. The issue of the FX and how to resolve it, the CBN has a pivotal a major role, but it's beyond the CBN. It's not CBN alone. If you want to export more, it's, it's not, not the CBN, CBN that will be exporting, right? If you want to look for other ways of boosting your reserves or, or increasing liquidity, mm -hmm. it's not just CBN. You know, like I mentioned in the piece that I wrote, uh, there are different options that we can look at, right? One is to increase our exports to make sure that oil is not the only thing we're selling to the world, right? 
uh, to expand our export base, the, the quantum of things that we export, the value of things that we export, and all of that. But it will take some time. It's not something, you know, it's not like you go into a room and you just put on the switch and the light mm. comes on. It will take a while. So it's not something, it's, a, it's more of a medium to long term kind of thing. We've been on it for, 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 for forever. We'll be talking about diversifying our export base. You know, but this will not yeah. be a just, it, it won't be a walk in the park. It's yeah. th this diversifying yeah. will also take money for us to diversify. It will, make, it will also entail that our economy enabling environment yeah. is, is built over time. And that uh, is absolutely. like mid to long term. Yeah. Yeah. But if we're talking about temporal options as to address the situation, yeah. W what should we be doing now? Should we yeah. still rest? Will it still be resting with the Central Bank of Nigeria? Uh, because your there's, piece there's, actually there's, looked there's, at there's, some there's, of those options. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, there are some parts that the Central yeah. Bank will play, right? Uh, because we're talking about also need to temporal, play their own temporal, parts, right? temporal, because yes. I don't think we can afford to see Naira depreciating for the next one year or even six yeah. months. Yeah. That's yeah. Or six to nine months. That yeah. will really be de debilitating on Nigerians. Uh, ab absolutely, absolutely. So what and are the I, options yeah. that are available? Because I understand you, mm -hmm. we need to diversify our export base. We yeah. need to diversify our foreign exchange earnings. Mm -hmm. That the Minister of Investment will come in. Yeah. Minister of, all of them will yeah. have to yeah. contribute yeah. their own yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah. But between now and the next nine months. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's go through the options, options there very yes. quickly. Um, apart from diversifying mm -hmm. exports, we need to attract both uh, foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investment. Uh, you know, that, you know, some of the things the CBN is doing uh, will provide the enabling environment for that. But you also need the other actors to come to the table. Uh, we can't have uh, policies that will be as working at cost purposes, right? Mm. CBN cannot be doing this, and the Ministry of Trade and Investment cannot be doing something else, and all these regulators cannot be doing all sorts of things that will be standing in the world attracting investment. But even investment will take, is not like, apart from portfolio investment, but even those ones, they can be fickle. Uh, they are not, they don't love you, right? They're after profit. And if they can get profit Anywhere. in other places, they're they not, they're not, you know, um, <coughs> they, they go, you know, so that's that. Another thing is we can take a loan. Just say this is an emergency situation, right? And there are different kind of loans that we can take. We can take commercial loans. We can take concessionary loans, right? The ones that, you know, so we can do euro bonds like we used to do. Uh, we can do, you know, like uh, this Afri Exim thing, you know, that's, that, will, that, that will attract interest of almost 12%. Um, we can also go to the World Bank or IMF. Um, but I think we have maxed out We've with, the, IMF, the, with the World Bank. Bank. Um, there's even a limit to what they can give you. And we don't want to go to IMF. IMF, there's this apathy. Yeah, you know, everybody, <laughs> everybody, we have never gone to IMF. Mm. But if you ask Nigerian political elites and people on the street, they will tell you that IMF is the one responsible for all the problems of Nigeria, right? But IMF is the place where you can go and get a loan about, you know, one to three percent interest, long, um, um, uh, just a, a tenor, you know, and also some decent moratorium, you know. Uh, but they will tell you you need They'll to give do you certain policies, things, man. right? But the good part is that we're already doing some of those things, like removal of subsidy, subsidy and all those exchange things. rate, uh, you know, um, uh, transparency, you know, and all of that, you know. So, uh, so we, is our choice. The other option is that we can also go to some countries and ask them to make some foreign deposit, right? Uh, sovereignty deposit. Um, UAE, for example, had something with Turkey, almost uh, about 50 billion. Um, if you look at Egypt, uh, you see UAE, you see Saudi Arabia, you see um, um, uh, Qatar, and even Libya uh, investing in their central bank uh, close to more than $30 billion, right? You know, what, whether, you know, want to go to those countries, and I, I'm sure that we're already talking to them. If you recall, the president went to UAE with his team, the president went to Saudi Arabia with his team. Uh, I'm sure that they want some reassurance and you know, and all of that. So that is, and also, you know, a country like the US, they, they do uh, a dollar swap, dollar currency swap, you know, um, dollar line swap rather. Uh, and they've done it for the UK, they've done it for Canada, they've done it for Mexico, they've done it for Japan, they've done it for Singapore, but would they do it for Nigeria? I'm not too sure. So I think our best bet will be these oil rich petro states. But the government also has to handle that very carefully. Uh, before some of Nigerians will start saying, oh, there's they, want that. To they want to Islamize Nigeria, <laughs> you know, and all of those things. So that is another option. Um, the last option is to mm -hmm. make sure that um, we start any more. 
Okay, before we leave that one, but you know, we don't, we have to look for that huge chunk of money. We need between 15 to 20 billion that will provide that stability, that reassurance that will calm the market. You see, we see a lot of demands in the market now that are more like opportunistic demand. Let me give you an example. We've seen what has been happening to, to the price of um, dollar in Nigeria, right? If I need dollar in June, let's say I, I want to take a trip, maybe I want to go to school or whatever it is, and I see the way dollar is going now, I might be thinking, I don't know what it will be in June. I don't need the money now. But I can say, I think I'm better off buying it now. So it's not the demand for now. Is the demand futuristic demand that I've brought forward? Mm -hmm. The other one is that you know um, you see your savings just losing value, and you can say, okay, maybe dollar is a better a store, store of value. value. So Let me give you an example. Store. There's somebody that, that bought a house um, in, in 20 sometime when dollar was a changing for uh, for uh, for about 200 to a dollar, 200 naira to a dollar. They bought the house for like 17 million. And they sold the house for 30 million when dollar was 1,200. When they bought the house, the house was about $85,000. When they sold the house, they sold it for $25,000. Depreciation. Right. So you also see people are saying, you know, you know, you see what is happening to inflation, see what is happening to devaluation, you know, my savings, you know, um, are just being depleted. I think it's better. Then you also have people who are speculating, mm. who think that if they buy dollar now, uh, is a way to, to make some quick buck, right? So, but if you have enough liquidity, all those, if I know that, if I need money in June, and I know that I can always get it, and I can always get it as a good rate, if I know that my value, the value of my savings will always be preserved, why should I be? And if I know that I can't make money off the dollar in Nigeria, so we need to sort out, how do we get that chunk mm. that will provide stability? but not too expensive like this, and enough. Three billion that we went to get uh, from uh, every exim. What is three billion? What is, our, what is our export demand per month? What is our backlog? That is money that will come and disappear. But if you have some substantial, if we get uh, Saudi Arabia, for example, to give up 50 billion, everybody will relax, right? But it's not just that money that you have, that one-off money that you get. You need to have cash flow. This is why we need to start any money from oil again. Oil again. Oil again. Okay. Because other ones will, will, will be in the pipeline. But this is what you already have. This is what you already have market for. Okay, Mr. Adio, yeah. because we just have uh, like a minute to go. We have, I have another interview. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at the official market, NAFEM, mm -hmm. and the parallel market. Yeah. You see that the Naira has been, you know, depreciating also at the official market. Yeah. And the parallel market's behavior mirrors it to higher. What do you think can really be done to get that distortion sorted? Okay. Because it, it continues. Because if it, people it, can it, get from officials, they will go to parallel okay. markets. Yes. Uh, the, the, the two markets are afflicted with the same problem. Mm. Liquidity. You don't have enough supply in the official market. You don't have enough supply in the parallel market. Right. And unfortunately for us, even when in the official market, uh, it's, um, I think it was 890 something yesterday, you know, the yeah. previous day was 900 mm -hmm. and something, mm -hmm. right? 878. But the people who are pricing their goods, they're indexing their prices against the, the parallel, parallel market. market. And that is why you have prices consistently Rising. going up. That's talking and that about is why in my, in, my, in my piece I said, oh. right, this is not just a threat to national security. Uh, to, the, to, the, to the regime, but also to national security. So it's not just a, a forex, you know, uh, um, or a central bank kind of stuff, you know. This is something that we have to see as a present danger, as the most challenging thing facing us today. We don't have to wait until something goes up. Okay. We have to put all our effort into, uh, into managing it. Thank you very much, Mr. Adio. I wish we had more time, you know, because when it comes to the Naira, there's a lot of layers and it has a lot of appendages because yes. <laughs> your currency we're, we're is really, affected. yes, one you know, the one, we are all affected one, in the many ways, one, the many ways, because it's also, you know, sometimes inflation. people will say, oh, but why is the price of Gary going up? <laughs> when the, the Gary seller sells a bag of Gary, there's an expectation of the bag of size of rice that you should get them. Mm. So why should, be, why should they be the ones losing out?
even when they are not important. So everybody will adjust their price. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I've been uh, speaking with Mr. Waziri Adio, who is the founder and executive director at Agora Policy, the immediate past executive secretary of NATO. That's why you saw that interview drifting to a bit of the oil industry at the beginning. But I had to, you know, reverse 